sewing, vintage clothing, and chongsams, these are Lin Tong's favorite things. Influenced by her mom, the 32-year-old public servant started sewing a decade ago. My mom taught me to sew. I think that enabled me to explore and go further in terms of the costume and design and the vintage collecting, because that lets me work with a lot more pieces, she reflected. While sewing is a hobby, she does the occasional commission job too. A lot of my designs and construction methods are inspired by the vintage pieces I collect, especially mid-century construction styles. Her favorite materials to work with are silk chamois and silk organza, as well as hand-drawn batik on cotton fine weave. Lin also pitches into her godmother's tailoring business. Golden Scissor Chong Sam her collection of vintage pieces now numbers over 500 pieces and her investment has exceeded 20,000 Singapore dollars. Most of her pieces are purchased online and she likes brands like Jonathan Logan and R&K Originals. She describes her collection as colorful, Chongsam-centric and quite high maintenance. Aside from Chongsams, she favors mid-century styles, especially those from the 1950s and 1960s. She said, Fashion is cyclical, but your taste is not. You should keep the clothes as long as you feel that you enjoy them, and you have a good purpose for them. Lin values the craftsmanship and construction of vintage clothing. She defines vintage fashion as clothing dated from the 1980s or older, highlighting that while vintage is usually second-hand, it is not always thrift as the rarity and quality of construction often drives higher prices for certain genres. She believes that vintage has a place in the modern world for two reasons. Firstly, sustainability when the lifetime of the piece is extended and secondly, heritage for the interesting story behind the piece. Her first vintage piece was the 1980s pleated skirt in a 1950s style which she found in the new 2U thrift shop when she was a student involved in theater and looking for pieces for projects. What attracted me to that piece was there is a genre called the circle skirt, which is a 360-degree circumference of skirt. Someone went to the effort to give you that flair. That flow when you spin. It really spun in a full circle. And there was a lot of thought put into the lining, the lace, of how it was put together. Lin calls herself a wearable collector. Some people choose to protect or not touch the pieces that they collect. Because I wear them, there's an ongoing inflow and outflow of pieces and I have no end goal in terms of the collection. I'm just enjoying the process. However, she doesn't acquire anything that won't survive the relocation from their home climate to tropical Singapore, for example, fur, as the drastic change in environment accelerates deterioration. When Lin's grandmother realized her passion for vintage, she gave her pieces that have stayed within the family, such as a 1970s light purple crochet dress which she had made for herself. This makes you feel quite loved to have these pieces from them. It's quite a privilege. And it does add on to how unique or special your collection is. She has also worn her grandmother's orange and blue chongsam to her graduation ceremony. It's deeply personal, but also political, a canvas for identity and narrative, making that also requires a lot of construction expertise, Lin stated, explaining how the chongsam started out as a male garment that was borrowed by educated women looking to differentiate themselves from homebound ladies but has evolved over the decades. Reflecting the patterns and influences that were key to Singapore's place in Southeast Asia. The Chongsam makes up around 20% of Lin's collection and she feels that it is an ideal symbol of her history as a Singaporean Chinese. I'm drawn to the Chongsam because I think it reflects my personal heritage and the geographical context that we grew up in. Her first Chongsam was a store-bought modern piece for Chinese New Year, but as she got more involved in vintage fashion, 
she began collecting pre-love pieces. To check if a chongsam is properly tailored, she advises looking at the hem to see if it's hand-stitched. She also points out that the center back zip is more likely to be found in chongsams that were made from the 1980s and onwards. Whereas those made in older periods would have a side closure or snap buttons. I love wearing the chongsam because for me, it conveys a kind of elegance and it also is a symbol of feminism for me in terms of the history of how it's constructed. Not only does she wear the chongsam to special events, she has even worn it to have supper at a roti prata stall. People often say that they can't wear chongsam and they can't tolerate it because it's not comfortable. But the reason why the collar is cut though is exactly what makes it elegant because it forces you to sit up straight, she quipped. Lin has a soft spot for what the vintage community calls wounded birds. These are pieces that have flaws or imperfections that require mending. Because I have a sewing background, I'm not intimidated by the fact that something might be damaged if it's a fixable flaw. I also sometimes think about its potential rather than its current reality in terms of the vintage piece. Some of these include a split seam or a tear seam. You look inside the fabric if there's extra that you can let out or cover the hole. If there's not enough allowance in the site, you might not be able to fix it. If there is, you could move it, you could take it into fit, she explained and adds that she spends a lot of time in the evenings remaking hems. Issues like stains require a bit of guesswork. Usually something that looks like it's been there for a very long time might not be able to come out. Oxygen bleach and white vinegar generally does the trick for most things. She said and also suggests the same to remove stale, musky odor. As many pieces from the 1950s also have cigarette stains, she advises embroidering over them or to put an iron-on applique to cover it. Maintaining the collection requires shielding it from direct sunlight and running the air conditioner and dehumidifier. Mops are my mortal enemy, Lynn declared. Keeping the temperature consistent and avoiding large fluctuations is key. I quarantine and launder new acquisitions to avoid moth eggs, keep the room as dry and cool as possible and kill every moth that dares try fly into my place. For precious pieces, she puts them in old pillowcases to protect them from rubbing against other pieces or being snagged and to protect them from direct sunlight. My general rule of thumb is that if it's older than me, I hand wash it. If it's younger than me, I look at the condition, she said. Silk or rayon pieces are hand washed while polyester goes in with the modern fabrics in a soft mesh bag. With cotton pieces, she washes them on a very low spin, under 400 rpm. She regularly goes through her collection and sells pieces that no longer fit. The idea is to find them a home that will love them for what remaining lifespan they have. She explained. Lin says that she will continue to collect because she enjoys it. It's not about reaching an end goal of a complete collection. It's the journey. It's more of a lifestyle rather than just a hobby because you spend a lot of time maintaining and taking care of the piece that you bring back. She said. As for what will she intends to do with her collection, she mused, whatever outlives me is to be given away by my friends to make some people with waist 24 to 28 inches very happy.